Welcome to Immortal Works Flash Fiction Friday, episode 62, by Joey Bishop, read by John Grundvig. He never could understand why they always fought him. They knew what they were doing was wrong, yet they always protested, claiming that their car broke down, that they were moving back east or out west to start a new life, or some other ridiculous reason like that. He knew better, though. He knew that those hitchhikers were never up to any good. They always preyed on the good Samaritans and those that were just trying to help. Criminals are what they are, always looking for their next victim. He never spoke of his own activities to anyone, though. They just wouldn't understand that he was doing everyone a favor. He was just doing his civic duty by removing them before they could hurt someone. He thought himself a vigilante, a hero's hero, standing up for those who couldn't do it themselves. He adjusted his glasses as he smiled at the thought, scanning the roadside for anyone who may be in need of his help. There were usually quite a few hitchhikers along this particular stretch of highway, as the hot Arizona desert was not kind to a lot of vehicles. It wasn't long before he spotted the very cliché sight, a woman standing on the side of the road behind a car in a fairly short skirt with one leg up resting on the suitcase and her thumb stuck up looking for a ride. He chuckled to himself as he pulled off to the side of the road and checked his rearview mirror to see her jogging up behind him. They almost made it too easy, he thought to himself. She'll struggle. They always do. But it'll end the same way as it always does. The opening of the car door shook him from his thoughts, and he turned and smiled warmly at the young woman who climbed into the car next to him. Her short brunette hair bounced loosely around her shoulders as she smiled shyly at him behind gorgeous, almond-shaped brown eyes. Thank you for stopping. I've been standing there for hours and no one has even given me a second look. My car broke down and I don't have any cell service out here. She held out her hand to shake his. My name is Persephone. Taking her hand in his, he smiled wryly. My name is Phil. It's nice to meet you. Without breaking eye contact after shaking her hand, he brought it up close to his nose and smelled his hand before turning back to the road, checking his mirrors, and pulling back onto the highway and continued his journey westward. You are certainly most welcome, Persephone, he stated, as if nothing strange had just transpired. I've always enjoyed giving people rides. It's one of the few things that still brings me joy in this life. She shook her head, trying to get her mind off of what had just happened, and back on track of what she was doing. How do you know, though, that I'm not a serial killer? She asked coyly. Oh, I highly doubt that. His laugh came straight from his belly. I mean, what are the odds of two serial killers being in the same car together? He gave her a sideways smirk and winked at her. She looked at him quizzically at the comment, and then more so when she heard the car doors lock. Safety first he told her in all seriousness, as he looked at her directly. So where are you headed, my dear? I'm heading to California to get away from an abusive boyfriend. He doesn't know where I'm at, but I'm scared to death that he'll find me. I just want to get as many miles between him and myself. Behind his concerned expression was mounting irritation. How dare she lie to him like that? He sighed inwardly as he suppressed his irritation momentarily. It was always the same. The boyfriend's story was new, but that's all it was. A story. Well, I'm not going quite that far. I'm just on my way to Monument Valley to take a look around. You're welcome to ride along until I get there if you want. That would be wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to have to stop and get gas here shortly, though, if that's all right, so we can make it there. He glanced sideways at her as he noticed her skirt had ridden up quite a bit since she had gotten into the car. Admiring the scenery, he thought he caught a brief glimpse of something metal gleaming in the sunlight before she smiled shyly and tugged her skirt back down. She shrugged her shoulders. I don't have a problem with that. I'm more or less at your mercy at the moment. She laughed delightedly at her joke. Twenty minutes later, they pulled into an abandoned gas station about a mile and a half off the main road. She looked around curiously. What is this place? The man shrugged his shoulders as he got out of the car and walked back to the trunk to pop it open. Just a little out of the way place that I bring my new friends that I pick up from time to time. 
Grabbing what he needed from the trunk, he walked over to her door and pulled it open, beckoning her to get out. Ten minutes later, the car, with a solitary figure in the driver's seat, pulled back onto the highway heading west toward California. In its wake, a body was left lying face down in the Arizona dirt with a hastily written note that read, You're welcome. And stuck in the back of the body was a knife buried up to its hilt. Thanks for listening. If you liked what you hear, please take a second to rate, review, or subscribe to help us grow our audience. And if you have a flash fiction story you want read on our podcast, please submit it at www.immortal-works.com.